All right, so uh, apologies for, for last week's uh, training being cancelled on such short notice. We had a public holiday here in Coffs Harbour and I uh, took the chance. I uh, <laughs> wasn't going to let that go. Um, so my recollection from a fortnight ago was we were working on a plan put forward which had a step in the guts. It was a, an Avalon. We were looking at the implications of stepping the site and uh, ma trying to maintain the same ceiling level and I guess the different allowances we'd need to make to price that without having full-blown architectural plans. So as you guys can see on my screen, this is the sales estimate we were working on for the Avalon 25 hip roof with the split level. I do recall we'd done the majority of the areas um, and we were just generally going through ticking items off and, and you know, adding in the, the gables and just kind of dropping things in there. Um, I don't think we got it quite finished, but I think we were thereabouts. So we might uh, move on to another project this week. So this one here is, uh, is one that was sent through to me from Melbourne West. I believe it's a proposed future home or, or display home. As you can see, it's... Um, quite a whopping house. Nice couple of bedrooms, a few little split levels happening, nice little inclusion upgrades every so often. Bit of a parapet Exolite, a few little sections of uh, easy like cladding to kind of break it up by the looks of it, um, and some face brick to the lower section. Quite a substantial uh, drop edge to the perimeter, or at least to uh, the vast majority of it and by the looks of it built to boundary so there will need to be some allowance of fireproofing to that side as well. Very interesting home. So I'm going to take a stab and say these things here are, are errors on the plans and that we're not proposing to put field gullies or graded drains in other people's yards. Um, nor would they realistically be all that required on the driveway. I mean, you could put it in if you chose, but probably isn't uh, a necessity. So we can see we have a step running through the guts there and then tying around into these retaining walls. Drop edge to the garage and the drive because it's built to boundary. All right, so as we've done in the past, I always try and copy a standard when making a start. It's, it's in my opinion, the, the most effective way of it, well, not overlooking any uh, notes specifically, but then also just about picking up the standard items that would otherwise get overlooked. So I'm just going to come in here and go new forward slash select, copy from another job. And as I've said in the past, I always try and copy from... Uh, the standard which starts with an A because if I am doing any revisions or adjustments I generally start at the top so it makes sense that the Avalon 191 should have the most up-to-date estimate. Let me choose select. Alright so first things first adjustment of the expiry date and then we just adjust these other names. So we've left this as custom. So we'll see if this one's actually got a design name. No, just custom. So 
So as you can see, we got our latest pricing model. Um, we've got our standard notations. Now, if we have a look here, we'll see if there's any gas bottles shown in the plans. No gas bottles currently shown, but a lot of the time in first round or second round, we, they, they don't go on because there's still quite a bit of ambiguity. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that there isn't reticulated gas at the street and that it will be bottled LPG and, until advised otherwise. Once again, our standard design and specification allows for sewer connection rather than connection to a wastewater, so that's why we've got that notation there, <coughs> as well as the others. So I guess first things first is uh, going around and picking up our areas for our area schedule. So we've got a garage of 38.14. Um, so we've got entry living, lower living, upper front living and upper rear living. Seems to be a couple of different steps happening in this and we should be able to generally see that. So they're coming up here, up the stairs, and up the stairs, and then up some stairs some more. Or are they, no, so are they going down once they get up here? Yep. All right. So we've got two lower areas, two upper areas, and obviously a lower garage. So if we just add these, this entry living and lower living together, that'll give us our lower living area. I've got a calculator in my hand, so I'm not a magician. 130.55. Oh, wrong one. Oh, no, that's right, lower. And then upper of 54.01 plus 86.13, 140.14. Kitchen size is 9.5, including the pantry bench. <coughs> now that, yeah, that is a full-blown um, kitchen bench in essence. So that would go in there. As you can see, we've still come under our allowance marginally, but there is no credit issued. Wet areas of 25.3, just over the allowance. And then we've got our perimeters. So cladded section being 6.3 plus 34.8 is 41.1. and total perimeter of 65.9 plus 57.6. Now, to take out this fast track discount, change this to high set. <coughs> this would be considered a high set loading. It's essentially a slab with a roof over. If there was a if this continued down and there was a heap of subfloors that required double brick or engaged bricks, uh, you know, to support the thing, then it would be considered a steep site. I would, I wouldn't treat this as steep site. I, I would treat this as high set, and then I would charge out the drop edges separately via the calculation bar. Um, so we've got that. All right, now we've got a veranda of 11.48, which is on the upper story. So that goes in there. And there's zero lower floor by the sounds of it. So whilst there is a porch, that porch is, by the looks of it, underneath the upper story. Yep. So there's absolutely no requirement to, to charge out an area that's already underneath the structure you're proposing to build. Uh, it's no different to charging out, say, a, an alfresco that's underneath the balcony if 
if that area is going to be there and you're not doing anything to it anyway, you don't you don't charge it out, you're not lining it, you're not providing a floor covering to it. If you were providing a slab, you'd just charge that out in the concrete rate. So in this instance, we've got a veranda on the upper story and we've just got dirt technically underneath it. We're not doing anything whatsoever differently because there is um, an alfresco underneath it. So that's why that area does not appear in the area's schedule. So I'm just going to leave this as Coffs Harbour uh, because I don't have any rates for the Melbourne area. So as you can see, we've got all our standard notes. The first thing I'll do is go through and uh, tidy them all up and, and swap them out with the newest ones if they are old or mark them off and, or delete them if they're not appropriate. Um, so I haven't gotten back in and fixed this one up, but there is a few new things in the standards relating to the PGH bricks. So I'm just going to wipe all those out. Tick that little box. And then add the standard inclusions and integrity edge back in. And as you can see, we've got all our PGH stuff in there. So I'm going to select all those and go mark complete. And we can start putting some things in the background. Um, so we've got these two standard general notes, preliminary estimate only, that's correct. Um, so I've got assumed M and assumed N2, which we've also stated we don't have a geotechnical report or a wind classification. There's no allowance for importing or exporting a fill. So we've got exposed slab edge termite barrier being the standard. Um, I try and encourage all our sales consultants and our franchisees to upgrade to a perimeter physical barrier where, where possible or where the, it's within the client's budget. It's reassurance not just uh, for them but also for yourself. There's nothing worse than a client uh, landscaping up against it and potentially avoiding the warranty, termites get in, and then you've got a, you know, an awkward situation on your hands. So the termite barrier length is also equivalent to the lower floor perimeter. It's only applied to the lower section. So if we just come back here, we've got 65.9. Thousand dollars for the reassurance of an actual physical protection is just, it's worth gold. All right, um, we do not have an energy report. It's our standard NBN notation. All right, so the site cost to not include peering. At this point in time, I won't include peering because it has not been expressed that uh, it's required. I mean, it does seem to be the majority of the house is actually on cut. There's a little section here which is on uh, on fill. And all this here would either be a suspended slab bearing on double brickwork or it would be um, yeah, infill slab. Either way, very, it probably wouldn't require peering if they went suspended. So. We'll mark that off. Um, just going to add this new note in. All right. So first things first. We seem to have a reasonable contour survey, um, aside from we've got an electrical pit and a Telstra pit um, proposed under the driveway, which certainly could be problematic. Um, but we do know their locations. So we don't have a meter box location shown, so we can really only make an estimate of the, the service length required and, and note where we anticipate it to be. So I'm just going to grab this perimeter item and check the scale. It says, it says 1 to 100 at 
size A1, which I don't think is this size. We're just going to measure this quickly. So that's 2.5. So we're actually looking at a scale of 1 to 0.2. That's better. So we come from this electrical pit and we're presumably going to come to this side wall here. And so we've got roughly yeah, 13 metres straight run without making any allowance to actually get up into the metre box. So it's probably worthwhile adding an extra few metres in just uh, to cover yourself or to cover the client. It's not what I wanted to search for. So we've got extra over for 10 metres up to 35 in the calc bar. So in this instance, assuming they've got to leave a couple metre tail inside the actual pit and that they've got to get up you know, a metre or two into the wall, if we add an extra, say, six, we should be covering ourselves. And then we would adjust this note regarding this here to just say that we've allowed for 16 linear metres. Now the Telstra, given it's right next to it, would share the exact same pit, so there's really no requirement there for charging out the Telstra service separately. It's just a bit of conduit and a draw wire in an existing um, trench. Um, got a clothesline, we might just go through and do a couple of little easy things that are on the plans. So we've got one ground mounted clothesline. Now we've got a letterbox. Now I'm going to disregard these random things over here. We've got 58 metres squared of path and porch, uh, drive path and porch. So if we just go N25. Now 58 square metres falls into what I categorise as a medium area rather than a large. I don't actually retain that section, that's more for internal use. Drive, porch and path of 58 metres squared. And we'll get rid of this note. Next thing we've got is this uh, approximate deepened edge beam to the driveway. Now there's two different ways they do that. They could do that in block work um, at the start and then pour the driveway on top of it. Or alternatively they could try and put some form boards down the side there and, uh, and back, you know, pour it in situ. That probably wouldn't be the preferential option. Uh, it would be too hard to try and back prop and you'd probably end up having to put supports into the neighbour's yard, which I doubt they'd be uh, too happy about. So we'll price that as a retaining wall separately after the fact. Um, so let's have a look at a few of these items that remain in IPROX. Alright, so we've got the line of the floor over, so there's a roof over that, we've got some awning windows. I'm just going to go through the plans and highlight things and throw them in and then we'll come back and do the quantities on them afterwards. So we've got a 920 door. We've got a custom window. Looks like we've already had one on the previous job. Another one there. And rear facade. Um, And it appears we've got one, two, three, five of them. On 
unless that's actually one panel in the same. No. And no. You gotta watch out for that when you're uh, pricing multi-story houses, specifically in stairwells. Whilst it'll show as a, a window on the upper and lower floor, in some it's actually the same window, so you've gotta double check your elevations to make sure it's not just one really tall window. Right, so we've got some reason we've got some steel beams going over the place. We've got a steel beam running through there. A couple of beams running back this way. Um, I would assume that this one here would probably end up being steel, seeing as it's uh, meeting into this one here over the stacker. But we'll come back to that. So we've got a couple of square set openings. Got a bulkhead shown on the plans, but not clearly noted. That's what that hatching is. Um, we've got a smeg pack. Going to assume it's package two, so we'll give them the promo. Um, we've got a, well I'm assuming it's a, uh, well, I'm assuming that's a bulkhead that's running around the outside, creating kind of the, the feel of a raised ceiling. Um, we've got a wall there, a couple of linens, freestanding bath. Bath. Cabinet made vanities. In terms of naming that room, I'm just going to call it the powder because there's clearly no um, no official naming convention. Then we've got a 1500 to the ensuite. with two bowls. So there's two different ways you can do that. You can add this additional item here. Um, I found lately adding this in creates a bit of confusion for the clients when they're then reading through this text saying that there's only one one included. They, they then come back and go, oh, you haven't allowed for the second basin. So I've actually just been adjusting this text and increasing the price. So I would say including two builders range basins and increasing that to 1550 to reflect the additional $500 charge. The square set opening, a niche, quite a few sliding doors. All right, so let's just start here on the second page. So we've got our fresco decking. So this decking is on the lower floor and is how high off the ground? Less than one meter and therefore doesn't recall, does have a section of balustrade. So we're going to have to price this as a, an above ground deck. But because it doesn't have a separate roof structure, we won't put it into the, um, the, the IPROX main detail section. We'll just put it in a separate decking. So we've got treated pine decking above one meter. And then we've got the extra over for hardwood. Um, upgrade from pine decking to hardwood decking. Now, 
Um, the same with, I guess, the uh, the vanities in terms of the confusion from a client's perspective. You can have them as two separate line items where you've got the hardwood and then you're up you know, the pine and then you're upgrading. Or alternatively, you can just merge the two items in together so the clients just see it as them getting hardwood without seeing the, the price differential between the pine and the hardwood. Um, that item there should not have that notation in it. So, builder's range hardwood decking. And we've got the appropriate rate in there. And the a shame. Yes. That's one of those ones where you just need to be careful about whether balustrade is included or not and specify. Yeah, so we've got that in all of the main items, but this item here is just the upgrade from pine to hardwood. For the decking, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's I think when you and I were just doing the copy and paste and pre populating those other ones we got a little bit overzealous. Um, okay, yep. So we've got fifteen point six of the alfresco decking above one meter so to al fresco and then once again um, we've got the the same situation we've already charged out the decking on the upper story which is the veranda We've already covered a standard pine deck. Now we've just got to charge the extra to actually go to the hardwood. So I'd go copy and paste, or alternatively, because you don't want to charge the client the whole extra for the decking again. So you just change this one back to fifty dollars, which is the upgrade from the pine to the hardwood, and it would be above one meter to veranda. And the veranda area is 11.48. So there's our fresco and there's our veranda sorted. Alright, now the porch concrete says it's 2.4 square metres, but um, I'm anticipating it's already been picked up in this here, seeing it's the same hatching all the way through and it says it's included. So we can forget that. We've done this. And we've done that. Alright, so we've got a 24 by 36 stacker. Now our standard uh, stacker and sliding door heights are 2100, the same as our entry doors. So if you're going any higher, you've got to charge out for the additional, which is an extra $250. Now, as we've just done with the other items, you can show them as separate line items or for well, simplicity from a client's perspective, you can just add the two prices together and bundle them in together. I find it's a bit easier to read if you just say you're providing a 24 by 36 instead of saying you're giving them a 36 wider than saying you're giving them a 2400 high. So 2400 stack a door to meals. Um, now, I think I said this uh, last training session, I always try and refer to the the external elements relative to their internal room. Um, it becomes a lot easier to quantify or state then, especially if um, you've got a door or a window that's literally just going to the outside. Um, so I always try and refer to the, the door as being, a, or window as a reference to what it's, you know, where you're coming from to get out, I guess if you get what I mean. Um, so we've picked up that stacker, we've got a 2400 square set opening through there, which makes me think the ceiling height must be substantially higher. We do, we've got 2740s and 2590s. Uh, 
Um, we've got a parapet through here. Once again, I'm just going through and throwing things in. We'll come back and do the values after the fact. Um, we've got a rendered and painted brick pier. Got some excellent. One, you'll see that we're actually now charging out Exolite as a as a line item rather than providing it the, the same cost as the brickwork. Um, whilst uh, our original estimates or the information provided to us uh, from Dualux indicated that it would be a, a, a nil cost transition, we found that not to be the case. Getting quality renderers and quality chippies and and, and the like and painters even for that matter, uh, have proven that it's not quite yet at the same cost as brickwork, even with the deduction for the removal of the insulation, it's still sitting, you know, 15 to $20 a square metre more expensive depending on the market that you're in. Hence, uh, we've now started charging for it as of, I think, Monday of this week. Um, so we've got that, we've got the face brick, we've got the Exolite, um, concrete tile roof. Also, uh, one other interesting aspect, I haven't updated the specification as of yet, it's still a work in practice, but hopefully uh, Monday the new specification will go live where we will be specifying colour bond as our standard moving forward. So colour bond will now be shown as uh, a, an inclusion, a standard inclusion rather than monio roof tiles and will no longer be getting charged, well standard hip and valley colour bond will no longer be getting charged at the $9 a square metre, uh, it once was and I'll also be moving the skillion price down uh, marginally to, um, in response to that and uh, the tile roofs, I'll have to do some price estimates and see whether or not that'll be a, a nil cost transition or if we'll start charging extra for those given that, uh, well, I guess our rates that we have for tiling is, is quite, uh, for tile roofs is quite attractive and now the volume has moved towards colour bond. Our purchase rates on tile when it's up for expiration mid next year, I think it is, will um, potentially be far, you know, potentially cost us a lot more because we won't have the volume we once did. So I think in the first instance we'll probably be offering it as a, a, a nil cost should a client want a standard builder's range tile but sometime next year I'd say it'll probably have to be reviewed and see whether or not it's uh, then suddenly costing us extra. Yeah, I thought you'd like that in. Easy that. Like. Um, we've got some easy lap cladding. Um, we've got 115 by 115 painted timber posts. Um, we've got our standard balustrading. Render and paint brickwork. Jeez, this thing's got a lot of combinations on it. Uh, it's got a trim deck roof which we charge out at the same rate as Skillion. Um, face brickwork to subfloor. We've got render. got the awning windows, we've got the custom windows. Um, all right. And we've got a aluminium privacy screen. Uh, powder coated aluminium privacy screen. got some louver windows. All right. So now it's time to start putting some uh, quantities. We've got a 
cabinet made laundry. Double undermount sink. Steel beam running through there. We've got bulkheads. Quite a few cavity sliding doors. One, two. I thought I saw some up here. Three, four, five, six. So an additional four cavity sliding doors. Now if anyone's wondering this is actually how my brain works, I literally just jump right across the plans and go berserk for a while before I then settle into something. So I'm assuming that hatching is indicating a low wall balustrade. Normally uh, these things are better detailed. I'm assuming this was a very early concept. Um, now this hatching I've got absolutely no idea whether it's trying to indicate some kind of void or I really don't know. Um, Alright, so let's just expand all these out. Yeah, cladding allowance for small areas. We've got a couple of different types of cladding involved here. Uh, a lot of jumping and jumping around, stopping and starting. I think that's definitely worth charging. Uh, the Exolite and Hebel cavity loading. Now, it's going to be difficult, uh, well, more difficult than it would normally to work this out because we actually haven't been given a perimeter for the Exolite. By the looks of it, we've only been given a length for the cladding for uh, the Easy Lap, or at least I'm assuming that's the case. We better double check. Got some easy lap there. Um, and there. So let's just double check that. That's 4.24, and that little section there. Plus 6.3. All right, so That's brickwork, that's x light with the same little section. And that's all x light as well. All right, so this schedule here where they've referred to the lengths of cladding, in reality, the 6.3 is the amount that's actually lightweight without any cavity, uh, which is top and bottom. And then the 34.8 minus 6.3 is the amount of x light. So the val where we've got this value on the cover page for the lightweight construction, it's potentially charging out at too high a rate. The X-Lite has, has a cavity, um, where so, so it shouldn't be getting charged there. It should be getting charged in the calculations bar. So we've got 
six. So it's, I guess it uh, it comes very much down to the way this information is presented. In my uh, opinion, it would have been better if it said six point three of such and such a cladding and X amount of such and such. So if the information isn't getting presented in a way that's um, yeah, you know, the way you prefer it or to make it easy, then you just need to ask the guys to to fix it on the plans. Um, so we've got 6.3 on the lower story and 6.3 on the upper because it's the exact same bit of cladding just running the whole out. So this is actually 12.6. And we've got 57.6 on the upper minus the 6.3 for the, no, 34.8 minus 6.3, so it leaves us with 28.5 of exolite on the upper story in theory. So we'll just check that thereabouts. Alright, so 21.85 plus 8.6, we're pretty, pretty close. Alright, so 28.5, so as you can see here we've got the perimeter which is excellent which is 28.5 times by 0 0.06 times by the main floor area which is this one here. Now that value can be anywhere from probably 700 up to about 1700 depending on the size of the house and how difficult it is. Um, so we've got 1081.92. So that's $1,850.08. So what we've done there is we've charged out for the fact that the house has a greater internal area than it would if it were brickwork because instead of being a 250 system, the Exolite's only 190, which is where this additional 60 comes from. So essentially for the same footprint, they've gained 60 mil around the outside of the upper story worth of additional living space and additional uh, you know plastering painting and and the like whereas uh, if it was in this value here it would actually be charging out the the whole thing it'd be literally um, it would just take the frame off and that's it so it'd be charging for uh, 100 and 60 mil, is that right? Uh, less the 200, less the 90 mil frame. So we're putting it in this lightweight cladding area. We're charging out the exolite at a much higher rate than we should. Um, easy lap cladding. Now, given it's three dollars twenty a square meter, I mean you can charge this out or or not. It's probably going to look pretty funny on the page when it comes through a sixty dollars worth of cladding. Uh, which is 6.3 times by the full height of the wall. Always make sure your scales are correct. So we've got roughly 12 square metres each wall, so 24. So, geez, I wasn't far off the mark. Um, yeah. So we've got the vanity to the powder and the vanity to the ensuite. I did see there was an additional 900 vanity on the lower story, which is this one here. which is actually called the powder, which puts us in an awkward situation. So we're going to have to come back and give this other room another name. Any suggestions? Richard, what would you call this room? Um, WA1. What? WA wet area. Oh. <laughs> Right here. Not to self. Don't ask Richard for suggestions. 
Yeah, actually, I prefer um, Ams. Your your crap. <laughs> uh, w C family. What about W C though? Ah, uh, all right. Let's not fight, kids. Um, all right. So we've got those two. Alright, now we've got this hatching, I only know because I've been here a while, means it's a low wall. Usually it's to try and let some light into these showers. I've been charging those out. Given that they do require a great deal of additional tiling and work on site than just putting in a screen. So we've got 1800 high timber frame, plasterboard wall with full height tiling to both sides of 1.02 to ensuite as per plan got a square set opening to the walk-in robe and what appears to be a bulkhead over the top of bed one these are rubbish plans like these are really really poorly detailed I'm, I'm actually quite disappointed. Um, steel beam. So we've got a steel beam running through here. There was a steel beam running over there. I'd be really, really surprised if these aren't steel beams, and I'd be really surprised if there isn't one running through. Surely there'd have to be a steel beam over that sliding door to, to pick up these two beams running the opposite direction. And we'll allow one four there. Um, that's all fine. have to be one to pick that beam up through there and take that roof load. Um, Alright, so we've got 5 plus 5.5 .5 plus 3.75, so 14.25 millimetres. I always like to note where they are just in case anyone ever queries me on it. So we'll write meals stacker door meals slash living garage door. Alright. So we've got Moving on, to, we'll leave that there just in case we uh, find some more. We've got laundry, that's a nice easy one. Cabinet made laundry bench. We can measure that. So we've got roughly two meters. That's that done. We've got a broom there, a linen there, and then a linen I saw in the top story as well. So if we just type in the word additional, you'll see we did some work here on the naming conventions. So we've got additional linen and store after the first one. So I'm just going to charge out whichever is the smallest of the two. They've both got a 720 door, so I'm, both, I'm going to assume they're both much the same size. So pretty much one metre. And 
lower story near powder. Alright, so this house has an overall area of 320 square metres but once you take out the garage and the veranda and the like, the living area isn't actually that large and yet it seems to have both a bathroom and an ensuite and a powder. So we should be charging the powder out as a line item given that they've got so many wet areas. So once again, if you, um, there's another way you can do it by typing in bathroom. You can charge it out as a full-blown bathroom. If it had a shower in it, I prefer to just charge it out at a lesser rate given that it doesn't have a shower or a bath in it. And the areas are, are stated just here. Um, that's touch and go that length. It's very, very much touch and go whether or not you charge those beams out of steel, um, especially if they need to uh, meet into the other beam. I might just add this one. That one there you could probably get away with timber given it's got the bearing length this way and can be checked in. So I'm just going to add an extra 4.75 to that structural. Plus 4.75 to bring it to a nice, neat 19. Meals to stack a door. Um, Alright. So I think before we get too far into it, I might just save it there and... Um, call for questions and at least then we've got a nice good starting position for next week. We'll start getting into the actual, uh, the, the intricacies I guess of this job which would obviously be you know, your parapets and all your retaining walls and your steps and your subfloor and uh, fireproofing of this section here given that it's built to boundary. So I'm just going to save these plans with all my markups and upload them just so we can pick up from the same location next time without any issues. Alright, so does anyone have any questions? Anything you'd like me to touch on more next week? Um, like I said, we'll just we'll continue on with this one next week and, and probably knock it out uh, during the session and then move on to another one from then. All right, well, thank you all very much for attending. I'll see you all next week. Yeah. You too, Anne. See you.